Hello there fellow cruisers, welcome back. If you're planning to set sail on a cruise and want to make the most of your cruise vacation from the very start, you're in the right place. I've cruised over a hundred times and have put together the ultimate boarding strategy that will have you cruising like a pro. From beating the lines and being prepared to unlocking those hidden gems on board, I've got all of the tricks of the trade. Are you ready to revolutionise the way you board a cruise? Let's start well before your cruise even starts. Now before boarding day, I highly recommend you download the Cruise Ships app and visit the online cruise planner. Most cruise lines allow you to complete check-in within the app or on the cruise planner, which is going to save you a lot of time in port. Once you complete the online check-in, you'll usually be provided with a boarding pass along with bag tags and the option to select a port arrival time. This could be a digital pass on your phone or something that you download which you can show on your phone in port or print it off as well. Now if you want to make the most of your cruise on the first day, I really recommend you choose an early port arrival window. This is the time you should arrive at the port. The earlier port arrival windows do go the fastest as people like to book them quickly. So if you leave the check in stage too late you may only be left with much later port arrival times so to avoid any disappointment make sure you check in as soon as check-in opens you can usually find out when the check-in date starts by searching your cruise line and saying something like when can i check in i always recommend staying near the port the night before your cruise that's if you have a long journey to the port or a flight involved, just to ensure you don't miss the ship. That is someone that has missed the boat. Due to things like flight delays and cancellations, bad traffic or anything else that could cause you to be late. You're going to have much less stress if you choose to do this. You can enjoy the night before, go for a lovely meal in port and plan out your journey in the morning of how you're going to arrive into the port terminal. Completing the online check-in step in advance can really significantly exit expedite your boarding process, saving you time and effort on embarkation day. Make sure you print a backup copy of your boarding pass just in case technology fails or your mobile device runs out of batteries or something like that. And make sure you print out your baggage luggage tags as well for each bag that you're planning to check in at the port. This ensures that your bags are delivered to the correct room. But don't worry if you can't print them off or you don't have a printer, a porter can always write out a a manual tag for you at the port. Next is to ensure that you arrive during your port arrival window time. If you arrive too early, you could be turned away and made to wait, which is really annoying. Boarding usually ends an hour or two before your ship is due to depart, so get there in plenty of time. Now, the exciting bit. You've arrived at the port. It's finally cruise day. The first step is going to be dropping off any bags that you're checking in. You'll see porters lined up in front of the port, ready to take your bags. Remember to show your appreciation by tipping a dollar or two for each bag as you drop off because it is hard work lifting all of those heavy bags, especially in the warmer climates. If you didn't manage to print off your bag tags, make sure you've got your cabin number at hand and tell the porter and they will write out a little manual one for you. Make sure you have all of the important things such as travel documents, boarding passes and identification in your hand baggage as well. Do not pack this into your luggage because you're going to need it and it could mean that you miss the ship. My God, dude. Oh my God. They left him. We recommend packing all of your medications, electronics, like cameras and high value items or anything else you may need in your hand luggage as well, just in case. My top tip is to also pack a spare pair of clothes and maybe a bathing costume in your hand luggage as well, just in case your bags take a little while to come and arrive in your cabin. This means you can go for a swim or maybe change into something fresh after a shower for dinner if your bags haven't already arrived. So the bags are now all dropped off and they're going to be taken onto your cruise ship and be put out of your door they usually do arrive before 5 p.m sometimes a little bit earlier depending on how busy the ship is the next step is to check in for your cruise in the terminal it should be very clear where you should check in there's usually lots of signage pointing towards the different port arrival times and there'll be a separate line for those 
cruising in suites or cruisers higher up on the cruise loyalty scheme. So if you are staying in a suite or you are high up on the cruise line loyalty scheme, we really recommend checking to see if you can check in earlier and bypass all of the big lines. If in doubt and you don't know where to go, just ask. Cruise ships are big these days, so expect to wait. Embarkation day can be hectic, with many passengers eager to board. Everyone is super excited to get on the ship, and not everybody has the good manners that you do. Patience is a key during this whole process. Now, if you did everything correctly with the online check-in, checking in should be really, really quick and easy. They may still need to grab a photo for you, a security picture, which they'll take at the desk sometimes, and they'll check over some of your documents again. So make sure you have all of these handy. We actually have a lovely little travel organiser, which holds our ID and any documentation to ensure they are really easy to get out as well as protected. So some cruise lines will give you your cruise card at this point at check-in. Others, you're going to find them on the ship. They'll be just outside of your car cabin door. At some point before boarding, you'll also be going through security as well. This may be before or after checking in, depending on the port. It's very similar to an airport, but you don't have to worry about things like liquids. If you have small amounts of liquids, you don't need to get them out of your bag. It's not like an airport that way. But we do recommend being really organised and make sure that all of your bags are really nicely organised and still be prepared to remove things like laptops for screening in some ports. Some cruise lines allow you to bring a small amount of alcohol or soft drinks on board. Check what you are allowed and make sure it's all packed in your hand luggage. Anything found in check luggage any drinks or anything will be removed so do a search just to make sure how much you're allowed to bring on most cruise lines allow you to bring on one bottle of wine per adult things like that and then a few cans of soda as well boarding the ship varies from cruise line to cruise line and port to port so things can look a little bit different depending on where you're from but the whole process is pretty similar. You may be assigned a boarding group and be required to wait until your group is called. You could even be given a card with a boarding group number on it or be sat in a specific section of the terminal where you'll be called in sections. So after you've done all of the check-in, they'll instruct you what to do. Then you've got to wait to be called to board or if you're super lucky, you'll board without having to wait at all. Sometimes you're free to go straight onto the ship, depending on how busy things are. This is really the exciting part. So take in every single moment. Eek, it's finally time to get on the ship. Still keep all of your documents at hand, just in case they need to scan things or check things once again. Usually you'll have to scan your boarding pass or the cruise card if you have it one more time before boarding. So make sure you have these handy with you because you'll be searching for them and panicking and holding people up and it'll be just all stressful. Now once on board your stateroom might not be ready yet on most cruise lines. Rooms are usually ready from around 1pm till about 3pm. If you're in a suite though this can differ. Sometimes suites are ready as soon as you get on board which is a nice perk as well. Probably during all of this boarding process you probably worked up a little bit of an appetite so it's a good idea to go find some food. There'll usually be a few different locations. The main buffet is usually the main option, but it is going to be the busiest place on the ship and it can be a little bit crowded and overwhelming. But try not to worry, this is not normal and the buffet should not be like this for the rest of your cruise. It's usually only very chaotic on boarding day. And if you are worried about it being a little bit busy, Go and try and find somewhere else quieter to eat, like a grill by the pool or even the main dining room if it's open. There should be a variety of options available, so it's a good idea to research before your cruise. And once you're on the cruise, you can log into the app as well and just have a check to see what areas are open. We love to go to some of the quieter places and just relax until our cabin's ready. So after a nice lunch, you're feeling nice and full, it's now a good time to go and explore the ship a little. Familiarise yourself with the layout, locate important areas. This might be the main dining rooms, theatres, pools, kids, clubs, and for some people, bars, they're the most important thing. Exploring early can help you navigate the ship more comfortably later on in your cruise, especially while it's a little bit quieter. Take your time. You're on vacation. Don't be in a rush to do all of the big activities, such as the water slides and rock climbing all in one day. There's plenty of time to do this during your cruise. 
But a top tip from me is that some of the biggest features on ships and activities can be quite quiet onboarding day and line free. So maybe do some research just to check out the big things you want to do. You might be able to score them off straight away. We also like to drop by the main dining room as well to check our assigned table for dinner and just to double check things like the times that we're due to eat, that they're all correct and that we're satisfied with the table location. If you're not happy with anything, make sure you ask to speak to the maitre d'. They can usually be found in one of the main dining rooms and they can usually make any changes for you. This would be a good time as well to remind the maitre d' who can talk to the chefs of any allergies or intolerances or dietary requirements so that they are fully prepared for you. The earlier that you get there, the more chance there's going to be of them being able to make changes for you because the changes are going to get smaller and smaller as it gets busier and busier. Now, an hour or so before departure, you'll be required to take part in the muster drill. This is similar to the safety demonstrations on an aeroplane. On some of the biggest cruise lines, such as Royal Caribbean, Princess, Carnival and Norwegian Cruise Line, you can actually complete some parts of the muster drill on the app, such as watching the safety video. Also, on some of the cruise lines, you can watch the safety video in your cabin as well. And lots of the cruise lines do know if you've watched it or not. So there's a tick box at the end just to say you have watched all of the video so you can't cheat so just watch the blooming video and get it over and done with on cruise lines holding virtual muster drills this is where you can attend the muster drill basically anywhere after you're boarded you should have been directed towards your muster station now i hear you saying what's a muster station this is the location you would go to in the event of an emergency everyone is assigned a specific location as well as a lifeboat next to that location so make sure you visit and check in noting things like the deck number and location so if anything does go wrong it's highly unlikely during your cruise you're going to know where to go it's really important now if your ship is holding an in-person muster drill you're going to be required to go to your muster station with everyone else to attend an in-person drill listening to the instructions being shown how to use things like life jackets all of the information will be on the overhead tannoys so listen out for all of the announcements you'll be directed what you should do you'll be told if it's an in-person muster drill or a virtual one your muster station is usually assigned a letter of the alphabet such as D for Delta or A for Alpha and this letter can be found on your cruise card or on the back of your cabin door or on the cruise ship app. Several announcements will be made outlining all of the safety procedures along with the emergency evacuation alarm. This is loud so make sure you cover any sensitive ears. This is usually seven short whistles and one long one but it is incredibly loud. Now once this is complete it's vacation time. Yay! Your cabin should have already have been ready by now as well so if you haven't done already go take a look hopefully your bags have been delivered as well and you can start unpacking and enjoying the cruise you will usually meet your stateroom host when you check into your cabin for the first time and they'll usually introduce themselves and give you a quick rundown of the cabin where the sockets are and what services they're going to provide you during the cruise like what time they're going to come in and clean your room it's a really good idea if you need anything extra like extra pillows or extra towels now is a really good time to ask your stateroom host they're going to become your best friends so treat them nicely as far as the rest of the day goes most cruise lines hold a sail away party on the top decks where you can watch the ship leave the port and wave everybody off. You'll usually find live music and a lovely party atmosphere with everyone getting into vacation mode. You can usually find out what time this starts on the daily planner. This may be on a piece of paper in your cabin or you can find everything happening in your cruise app as well. But listen out for those announcements because boarding day is when they make the most of the announcements telling people what to do. Now talking about the cruise app, now is a good time to make sure you booked everything you wanted to if you haven't already done it before. We recommend booking everything before you even get on the cruise. But if you haven't done this and you have your heart set on specific dining in specific restaurants and times or participating in specific onboard activities or attending certain shows, 
consider making reservations as soon as possible popular options and big shows can fill up super quickly so booking early ensures you won't miss out on any of your desired experiences so you're not going to be left disappointed you can log into any pre-purchased wi-fi package as well as soon as you board so if you bought a wi-fi package before you can log in through the app and it usually tells you how to do so one shot on there now if you're not planning to use the wi-fi i recommend highly that you place your phone into aeroplane mode and turn off data roaming completely to avoid any extra charges most cruise lines have a data and phone network alongside their wi-fi and let me tell you it is so so expensive to use so do not be caught out now you can still turn on wi-fi whilst using aeroplane mode and you can connect for free using the app you don't need to pay for the wi-fi to use the ship board app so you'd usually go back to your cabin after the sail away party now would be a good time to go for a shower and to freshen up for the evening ahead maybe head to a bar or listen to some live music and then head for dinner at your assigned dining time if you have a flexible dining plan with no dining time set we still recommend making reservations if you're able to do so on your cruise line so sometimes when you're doing a flexible dining plan there is still a huge line if you don't have reservations you can usually go to the main dining room or use the app to make reservations every single night at a certain time that works for you Oof, that was a lot of information that's about it enjoy it all i can say is remember again boarding day can feel a little hectic and crazy but it's all going to calm down soon so do not worry enjoy your cruise thanks so much for watching if you have any tips that i may have missed let us know in the comment section below plus keep an eye out for my best disembarkation strategy tips on the channel coming soon thanks so much for watching we really do appreciate it have to say a big thank you to our patrons as well you too can become a patron very kindly by clicking the link in the description description section below we value our patrons so much as well as all of our viewers in return we give you things like extra episodes behind the scenes sort of stuff early access to our videos so you see them before anybody else most importantly no annoying ads at all they are completely ad free and we do a monthly zoom call where we get to chat to you as well which is fabulous so i guess that's it see you next time